talk of phenomenology, this is a research methodology or a research method in qualitative research that that's actually concerned about the lived experience of people. Okay, when we say lived experience, this is the world of everyday life of the people. Okay, how they live their life, no? How they uh, how they communicate with other people? How do they deal with their certain situation? Okay? That's the subject or the lived experience, no? Of phenomenological inquiry or phenomenological research. Okay? If you will look in phenomenology and the philosophical roots of it, okay, we will not dive in too much in the philosophical roots because it's too deep, no, and it's uh, it's complicated to explain, no. So to simplify things, okay, when we look into the definition and the roots of your phenomenology, it's actually the total sphere of experiences of an individual, which is circumscribed in the objects the persons, the events that they encountered in their lives, no? in the pragmatic objective of living. Okay, what does it mean? It means that when we talk of phenomenology, whatever happens in the life of the person, what he or she experience is the target okay, of lived of phenomenology. That lived experience, the life of the person, is the one that we are studying, okay? Now, the roots of phenomenology can come no, in three different phases. No? It, uh, it comes from uh, during the preparatory phase. No? It also has roots from the German phase. When we say the second, the second phase or the German phase, the Germans, no, German philosophers introduced some concepts, no? in the in the uh, study of you know, or in the philosophy of phenomenology and also a french phase or the final phase uh, when we talk of preparatory phase this is the initial phase of phenomenology as a philosophy wherein uh, the primary focus was given on intentionality meaning uh, that that the consciousness is always conscious of something Okay, so it means that our minds, our consciousness is conscious of the things around us. It talks about the experience that we have. It talks about the things that are around us and how we perceive it. During the German phase, Husserl and Heidegger are the primary, uh, the primary philosophers or leaders for this phase. Uh, they identified the meaning of essences, the intuiting and phenomenological reduction. When we say essences, the individual units no, of experiences outside the person, intuiting meaning how they get in touch to that particular uh, essence, and reduction is, to, uh, is the ability to reduce and explain okay, the particular uh, experience or phenomenon that a person and the researcher might observe. Now, in, during the French phase, they try to emphasize the word of embodiment. When you say embodiment, the total application so in the large scale of your understanding of the phenomenon and being part of the world or being in the world, meaning you are trying to, to be connected with with reality. Now, phenomenology, no, the, the purpose of phenomenology or the primary purpose of phenomenological inquiry is to explain the structure or essence of the lived experience no, in the search of unity of meaning, which is the identification of essence and its accurate description through that everyday lived experience. It means that when we do phenomenology, we try to find one meaning for all of the experiences of all people. So for example, I have, uh, I have another pe person here with me, his or her experience no? and my experience, when you try to combine it and find a common 
or united uh, explanation of meaning of those experiences, you are doing phenomenology. Okay? So the purpose of phenomenology is to identify and explain the essence of lived experience through a unified meaning. So it means that you try to combine the meanings no, of your respondents. Okay. Now here are some of the methodological interpretations no, that we use for uh, methodology or for phenomenology. Like for example, this one, this is the colysis method, okay, which involves no, describing the phenomenon of interest, no, collecting participants' description of the phenomenon, reading all of it, no, and extracting okay, the significant statements and spell out the meaning of the significant statement and organize, aggregate no, the meanings into clusters or themes and then which are given a, an exhaustive description and with the validation of your, okay, with the validation of the description and uh, the new data are revealed during the validation, you, know, you incorporate them in the exhaustive description. The most commonly used, okay, so please remember this, the most commonly used uh, method of interpretation, oh, sorry, the most commonly used method of, I'll share again, sorry. Okay. So the most commonly used uh, method of, of analyzing your, your phenomenological study is through the use of colysis method. So remember this one, okay? Remember this one, colysis method, because this is the commonly used method for analyzing data. There may be other that you can use, but you can have, you can be, the structure is still the same, no? You describe the phenomenon that you want to study, then you collect the description of the participants, of your respondents, okay? Read all of their description, no? and then extract the significant statement. Now, when you extract the significant statement, you try to give meaning out of each significant statement and organize them into clusters of themes, etc., until you time to validate it and, uh, and also uh, write it, no? An exhaustive description if you find new data that are really revealed during the validation, okay? So let's proceed to the next slide, which is I think, you know, the forms of phenomenology. So there are two major forms of phenomenology. Actually, there are six, but primarily there are, there are two that we try, that we want to, to tackle in this class, which is descriptive phenomenology, okay? The direct, which uh, involves direct exploration, analysis, and description of particular phenomenon, okay? As free as possible from unexamined presuppositions aiming to maximum intuitive presentation. So you don't, inter in, in, uh, in descriptive phenomenology, you're just there to describe the phenomenon, no? And try to find a united meaning for all. So in this type of phenomenology, you do not interpret because you interpret no, this phenomenology at the hermeneutic type or the interpretative phenomenology or a special kind no, of inter phenomenological interpretation designed to unveil no, concealed meanings in the phenomena. So you're looking into the concealed meaning no, of what you observe, no, primarily observe. Okay. So when do you use or when do you select no, phenomenology as a method no, in education? Firstly, no, when, your, uh, when your topic in the education system no, 
is about the belief of people. No? It's about the life of the people. If you want to capture the holistic perspective no, of the educational, educational system, then a phenomenological research method no, is appropriate. If your research no, entails analyzing human experience, okay, the human experience of your students, the human experience of teachers, the human experience of administrators, no? and the school community as a whole, you can use phenomenological research. Okay? All right, so, so that ends my discussion of, my, uh, of, of a primer of phenomenology. To help us understand better what is phenomenology, and I know that some of you have, uh, have seen this particular example. This is a phenomenology that I wrote. Okay, This is uh, my research during my dissertation in, uh, in Adamson University. And it talks about the experience no, in the school of adolescent mothers. Okay, So to speak, it's about teenage mothers, mothers who got pregnant and became, became mothers at an early age, no, during their teenage years, while they are studying college here in the Philippines. So it talks about uh, this, uh, this particular research is published in the EO4 Journal of Education. No? This was published in last February 2021, no? this year. And uh, this is the product of my, uh, product of my uh, years of study. No? for my doctoral thesis or dissertation. So this is a descriptive phenomenology. This is an example of descriptive phenomenology because it's about experiencing or describing the experience no, of the adolescent mothers, okay? Adolescent mothers who are studying in college here in the Philippines. So it's about... Uh, uh, studying about what's studying their um, studying their their experience no of what they went through during their study or course of education in college here in the Philippines. Okay, now if you will look at the data collection procedure, the primary the primary um, method that I use no. Is, a, is the one that is used by user, okay? First, you need to keep a reflective journal so that you will know your biases, you will know your uh, weaknesses, you will know your preposition, presuppositions and preconception about the topic. Because class, when we do qualitative research, sometimes our preconception of the topic may affect how we uh, we address how we present our data in phenomenology, all right? Making us or failing us to reflect what's really the reality, no, of about this adolescent of my subjects or of my respondents. Okay, so if you will look no, into the question, it's only one question that I have during the qualitative interview. Okay, and what question is that? I just asked them, what was your, what was your lived experience no? as a college student no? when you became adolescent, an adolescent parent? And uh, through that unstructured interview, no, everything stemmed out during that conversation or during those conversations. So we had conversations, no? And uh, we found out during that time, okay, that there are five major themes that affect their lives, no? Number one, it's about facing the ordeal, no? facing their dilemma of being a pregnant at an early age and while studying. Number two, they talked about the, their, their path, of parent, path to parenthood that was not easy, no? 
because some of the respondents no, were actually having difficulty in carrying the child. Some mothers experience violence from their partners. And some other people or some mothers experience judgment no, from religious organizations and their school themselves. So they believe that the path to parenthood is quite difficult. No? But then they learn that it's really important no, to embrace the value of being a college graduate. Okay? So they learn that they need to finish their studies because they want to have a better future for their children. Okay? And that being said, they stood up no? and became strong because they want to envision a family for their future. So the primary method to analyze the data here is Colysis method, okay? We're in subcategories no, of, the, of the findings no, or of the findings no, or of the significant statements were extracted and group them into categories. And these categories were grouped into themes, okay? So this whole experience no, has its individual units, but there are also relationship from these individual units. So all of them are actually connected to each other, right? Comprising the whole experience of being, uh, of being uh, an adolescent mother studying, no? studying college here in the Philippines, okay? So that's the that's the uh, essence no, of my paper. All right. So that's how you do phenomenology. Okay. So you get the responses no, from the respondents. You try to extract the significant meanings. You try to make meaning out of it and connect it and unify it, and then validate it. No to the, uh, validate it to your uh, respondents and then develop uh, an exhaustive description of the whole phenomenon. So I hope you read this paper because this one is interesting, okay? And I hope no, this gives you inspiration in developing your own paper. Okay. All right, so that ends our discussion. Okay.